I got this question a day ago and I thought maybe other people have this question too. The question was, do you think keeping a blog that has a bunch of content, just even say like a daily marketing journal type blog, all real, all handwritten, but you know, not fully optimized or really targeting anything purposefully, do you think something like that can hurt your SEO? Basically having a ton of indexed pages on various topics that don't rank. So first I'm gonna share my answer to this. Then I'm gonna share when this becomes a problem. And then after that, I'm gonna share the best way to implement something like this because there's actually a very savvy SEO way to put this in that a lot of people don't know. That's what I got for you on episode 688 of The Edward Show, 688 days in a row doing this podcast. Let's go. So I don't think this is actually a problem and I'm personally doing something similar with my website, edwardsturm.com. edwardsturm.com forward slash articles, my article sections, basically my blog. All of these articles started as newsletters. I have a weekly newsletter, edwardsturm.com forward slash newsletter. And then when I send out this, this weekly newsletter, I take what I write and I syndicate it. I copy it and I put it onto my blog. Lots of these articles, they're not targeting keywords, but I still feel like it's good content. If it was good enough for me to send out to all of my readers, thank you to all of my readers, if it was good enough for me to send out there, then it's definitely good, good enough for me to have to be public facing on my blog. So I put them there for brand building so people can, can go and read what I've written in the past. And then also these, these blog posts, they might just rank accidentally and some do rank. And then what I do is I see what they are ranking for, and it might be very little work for me to make these blog posts rank even higher for these keywords. You go to Google search console, you see what keywords, what queries you are ranking for. You see the pages that are ranking for those queries. And then you might be like, oh, you know, if I take this keyword and I put it up just higher on the page and I add an extra sentence for it, just an extra sentence of, cont of context, or maybe even like three sentences, whatever, then I'm going to rank so much better. And it's such a little amount of work and you're already ranking for that. And just by optimizing the page a little bit better, spending five minutes, you're going to get a lot more traffic. And it's evergreen, it's SEO. And then sometimes I even, I take these newsletters that I send out and I, and I, I think, okay, are there any keywords that are relevant to these newsletters? I didn't write this newsletter targeting a keyword, but you know what? There might be a keyword that is relevant to this. And then I'll do like five minutes of keyword research. I'll think of something that might represent it, or I'll give the newsletter to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT what are potential keywords that represent this. I'll look up those keywords, get volume data, find one that's relevant and use that keyword in the page title, meta description, H1, URL slug, and beginning of the first sentence. And it's very little extra work to target that keyword because my newsletter is already written. But again, lots of my articles on edwardsturm.com, they're not targeting any keywords. And it's totally okay. I have them there for brand building. I think they're very useful. I think a lot of people appreciate them. For example, Pareto SEO, one of my favorite articles. Pareto SEO on my site, the 20% of SEO things to do that get 80% of the results. I'm not targeting any keywords with that. I probably could target a keyword with the, with the headline, with the H1, with a title, but I like how Pareto SEO sounds, so I leave it in. And I believe it's very, very valuable for visitors of my site, and it's very valuable for brand building. So to directly answer your question, Brightbeam SEO, and thanks again for the question, no, I don't think this will hurt your SEO unless, and here's where it becomes a problem. Becomes a problem if these posts, they have like random strings for their URLs. So just like random letters and numbers for their URLs. If there's no page title, there's no meta description, there's, there's no H1, you're not using alt text. That's, that's when it becomes a problem. Or if pages are automatically generated, they're, they're useless for literally nobody, including you. It's a problem. Then it's a problem when, when pages or posts are duplicate content. If you want to detect this, you can use Screaming Frog. Screaming Frog will crawl up to 500 URLs for free. That'll be best for diagnosing like pages or posts that are not have that don't have a page title, meta description, random slugs, no H1. If you have some junk pages, you can also search on Google site colon your site.com and then like lorem ipsum, which is usually the filler text for elements on a website. 
And you can see if there are any pages that are indexed where you have this filler text in, and then you can fix that. But especially for making these blog posts, and you're not targeting any keywords in particular, nothing's really optimized, do the bare minimum, have a readable URL slug, a readable page title, put your brand name at the end of each page title, have a meta description, have an H1, have alt text, try to make it look good, don't make it look bad, make the layout look nice. And okay, so here's how to, oh, and then actually before I even say how to do it properly, Brightbeam SEO had a follow-up question, which, which is, I am doing this daily, and I, I got worried that having 365 blog posts added every year might start to hurt me. The answer is no, but you should constantly be doing the type of brand building that I talk about on this show. You should have links coming to your site all the time. Make sure you're submitting to directories, go on podcasts using AIPodcastMatcher.com, make occasional videos and have the video descriptions linked to your site. Try to have people going to your site. Google loves when your site gets actual engagement. A quick story about this actually is a friend of mine, and I talked about this a long time ago in the podcast, he launched a site targeting, it was called like focusmusic.fm. There was nothing on it except for a play button. And the URL was like focus. It was the URL was focusmusic.fm. The page title was focus music. Focus music was a highly competitive keyword at the time. My friend launched it on product hunt because the UI UX was so clean, it was literally just a play button, a play button that turns to stop when you hit play. That was it. And, and then the music was good because it was so clean. It ended up doing really well on product hunt. It was number one and got shared a lot. All the links and all the engagement literally had it ranking the next day, a brand new site ranking the next day for focus music. And it continued to rank there for a long time, even when the links died off, even when it wasn't getting more links, just because it had engagement. Engagement is so important. And a lot of the times when you get engagement, you also get links. So just constantly be doing marketing for your site. That's generally a best practice. All right, so here's how to do something like this, how to, how to do it the right way. And it's pretty simple. So first of all, it depends how valuable this stuff is front facing, like how valuable it is for, for visitors. Is this the type of content, your 365 blog posts a year, that's that your marketing journal, is this the type of content that you really want visitors to see? Or is there content that you would rather have visitors see? If it's not that important that visitors see it, but you, but you want them to see it, but it's not that important, what you do is, and you should do this anyway, because it's, this is a different type of content than what you're normally doing. So have like a subfolder and it's yoursite.com forward slash blog forward slash marketing dash journal. And so you have your, your normal blog and your normal blog is all the blog posts that you worked really hard of, that you're really proud of. And those are the things that you really want visitors to see. You really want Google to notice. And then you have, you have a button at the top of your blog or something, or maybe somewhere on the bottom of your blog. And it says market daily marketing journal. It could be a button. It could be an image, whatever. And then you click that. And then it goes to your daily marketing journal. And that's nested one layer in it's a, it takes an extra click to go there by having it be more clicks away from your homepage. That means this section of your site and these posts, they get less SEO link juice than your main blog posts or your main pages or whatever. Generally speaking, the more clicks it takes from a homepage to get to, the less link juice these pages or posts get. Further away, less link juice. Now, if you'd actually really like visitors to see this, what I would suggest doing is still have this in a subfolder, still do forward slash blog, forward slash marketing dash journal, and then link to it from wherever you link it to your blog. So if you have your blog link to in your footer, also under the, under the blog, put marketing journal. Maybe you have it in your top navigation as well. If it's something that you really want people to see, but if it's not something that you, that you really want visitors to see, if it's not that important for brand building, but you still want to, maybe it will be indexed and rank for stuff on Google. You still want that, but you don't really care, or maybe you're not even eager for visitors to see it then only have it linked to from your blog section and not in the footer or the top navigation. But if you want visitors to see it, if you think this is so cool that I have this marketing journal, put it in your footer, put in your top naviga navigation, but still have it as its own section within your blog. That's the savvy way to do it. And again, because it's, it's just one link from your homepage, if it's in your footer, it's one link from your home, it's one click from your homepage, it's linked right there from your homepage. 
then it gets the same amount of SEO link juice as your blog. But it also helps Google distinguish between the types of content. That's very helpful for Google as well. So anyway, to answer the overall question, this is not harmful at all. Actually thinks it's super cool that you're doing that. Just make sure that you have the URL slugs filled out, page title, meta description, H1, alt text, all of that stuff. And definitely make this its own section forward slash marketing dash journal nested within your blog. And if you're proud of this, probably link to it in your footer as well, maybe top navigation. And that's all that I got for you on episode 688 of The Edward Show. If you like this, you wanna go deep into SEO and save years of your life learning search engine optimization. I spent a year making my SEO course compact keywords. It's 13 and a half hours long. I'm constantly updating it and making it better. Just today, I added a super detailed step-by-step -step technical SEO audit checklist. I got a message from someone who purchased Compact Keywords. They're like, can you, can you give me a checklist for how to do the audit that you show in the videos in Compact Keywords? And so I had this checklist because somebody else had asked this in the past and I, I had this checklist, I sent it to them and I'm like, if you know, if I had two people asking me this, probably other people want this as well. And I'm just gonna turn this into a section in Compact Keywords and I did that. I'm constantly updating it. It's really good. It will save literally years of your life learning SEO. And it's all about how to actually get results, customers, users, leads, the things that make you money with SEO. It's not just ranking for keywords and then you rank and nothing happens. It's ranking for keywords that get you customers. That's what Compact Keywords is about. CompactKeywords.com. Thank you again for listening or watching this episode of the show. This is my daily show every day. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.